What is up, YouTube? Welcome to today's video, and we have a bit of a demonstration today of the three best belts for magic finding. I get asked this question quite a bit, which is what is the best belt for magic finding? And in reality, it really comes down to your budget level because a lot of people want to do magic finding on a budget. And the number one item that's going to be the most expensive for almost every single build is going to be the belt if you require a headhunter or a mage blood. And lots of people are confused about which belt is the best. I have a lot of people always ask me on Twitch, what is the best belt? Is it going to be headhunter or is it going to be mage blood? And people also have their own personal preference. But a lot of it does come down to how rich you are and what type of farming strategy you're going to be utilizing. So this is kind of a little bit of a surge from PoE Ninja. And this is Goldworm. Almost every single Magic Finder is probably going to be wearing Goldworm. And you can see right here that Bisco's Leash is pretty popular at 34%. And that's probably because most of the population does not have the money to afford a Mage Blood or even a Headhunter. And we can see Headhunter is second at 33%. And Mage Blood is last at 10%, probably because of its exorbitant price. Now, for this video, we're going to be doing a mapping demonstration with each of these belts. And we're going to go over all of their strengths and weaknesses and kind of give you a bit of an idea of what it actually looks like and how Bisco's Leash can actually work. Now, first off, we have to understand how can we bridge the gap between Headhunter and Mage Blood and Bisco's because Headhunter does provide power that is unparalleled for the other two belts. Now, Inspired Learning is going to be the answer for Bisco's and mage blood to match headhunter's power level especially when you're doing league mechanics like abyss or legion now what inspired learning does is it allows you to gain one modifier from a rare monster for 20 seconds now headhunter gains all of the modifiers for 60 seconds so it's going to be much much better now you cannot stack inspired learning with headhunter like in the past you can only have headhunter or inspired learning so you can't have both now the biggest difference is definitely the duration because you can emulate how many modifiers you steal by stacking more of the Inspired Learnings. However, you cannot really mimic the duration from 20 seconds to 60 seconds. And that difference is what allows Headhunter to get up to 50 stacks really easily, especially during Legion or any sort of Abyss farm. Now, if you use Mage Blood or Bisco's Leech, you kind of want to fit in one or two minimum into your build and these are the places that you can fit it so the way that it actually works in order to fit one of these into your build is you actually need to have four notables so you have one two three four and I actually have two of these uh, inspired learning is good to go for this test so you can see right here it's going to be activated and when it's activated you can see on the bottom line it says when you kill a rare monster you gain one of its modifiers for 20 seconds and when it's not activated you'll see that it, the bottom line does not actually pop up so First off, we're going to start off with... Let's see, what are we going to start off with? We're going to start off with Bisco's Leash. Now, for Bisco's Leash, I'm pretty much using the same setup as Headhunter. And we are going to be doing a pretty hard map. Well, let's do a little bit of an easier map. And we are going to be running all eight modern maps. And this is going to be quite challenging for the build. And I'm not going to do the full map because it's going to take me quite a while. But I do actually have to loot the map where I'm going to be losing a lot of money. But basically for the setup, we're running a uh, quick silver flash, silver flash with movement speed, uh, some resist that helps us out, and then rarity flash. And these are going to be the same flash we're going to be using on Headhunter. So before we get into it, Bisco's Leech actually grants the highest amount of quantity. The corruption actually makes it 10%, so you can get actually 10% quant on the belt. It grants you Rampage, which is a kill streak mechanic that provides rewards at certain amount of kills so once you reach like 15 30 70 100 kills something special pops up and it also grants you one percent rarity per 15 rampage stack so you can actually get up to 66 percent rarity and 10 percent quantity on this belt alone and the best part about rampage is it also gives you a bunch of movement speed up to 50 percent movement speed and it also gives you i think uh what's like a two percent increased damage per 20 rampage stacks so up to 100% increased damage. Now this does make it so you have to run a 2x inspired learning setup. And as you can see in this setup right here, I don't actually have cap resist. And the way we're going to get cap resist is we're going to rely on inspired learnings and we're going to rely on our flasks. Now this is going to be probably the worst feeling option out of it all. Let me lower the sound a little bit so it's not too crazy loud so you can still hear what I'm saying. 
So for these maps, you always want to be running to the boss. And once you kill a few mobs, it's uh, it's not too bad. Now the boss is going to be kind of difficult with this setup because we don't we're not going to have a bunch of buffs. Mage Blood is definitely going to make it the easiest to clear. But we're trying to run to the boss like usual. And you can see, once we get a few of these Inspire Learning Stacks, it feels pretty good. And now, oh no, we got a Beyond Boss. Now here, we just have to pray that the boss doesn't kill us. And nice, we got the boss down. And now we pretty much clear the whole map as fast as possible. Now speed is going to be of the essence when you're running this setup. Because Bisco's Leech is really dependent on these Inspire Learning Buffs to work. You can see right here, that is the Rampage Counter. It's going up. It's kind of a fun little game to yourself. Can you get this Rampage to 1000? Now the biggest problem is that you have to get the Altars, right? So you want to make sure you always click the Player Altars. And you're kind of on a time crunch. So once you feel like you cleared the whole map and you have all the Altars, then you can actually start popping the stuff, right? So now once we get everything, you can see we're only at 7 buffs. But that's still plenty, and we are actually getting a lot of loot. I think this setup is running around 110% quant. So theoretically, with Bisco's Leash, we are actually running the highest amount of quant possible. And once we get the Legion popped, it's going to feel a lot better. Because Legion is uh, pretty much a battery for Headhunter, or Bisco's Leash. So... Overall, once we get all of that out, you can see we are up to 24 buffs. Now, usually with Headhunter, we might be up to like 50 buffs, but with Bisco's Leash, since the duration is shorter, we are not able to get that many. So what we want to do is we want to click all the Legions, and we, then we want to click all the strong boxes. And now, it's pretty good, right? And then we have another Legion coming up, and you can see we're at 23 buffs. And there's going to be a big little contrast between this and the Headhunter demonstration, because the Headhunter demonstration will be at 50 to 60. And... It does give you a little bit of a survivability with this because you do have 1,000 Rampage stacks. Oh no, see our Rampage fell off because the Legion didn't pop in time. So now we lost all of our Rampage stacks. But I actually even like using the Bisco's Leash without, while I have the Headhunter, purely because you just get that extra amount of Quant and Rarity that you normally wouldn't be able to have. And if you can clear the map in the end and it's around the same speed, because this is not really any that much slower than using a Headhunter, then why not have the most amount of quant and rarity that you could possibly have? So now we're going to open all the strong boxes. And notice how the Petrified Blood and Divination Distla is being kept up the whole time. And I think we're more or less done with the map. Usually there's around three legions. Oh wait, there's another legion over here. But I do think that if you look at this setup, Mage Blood is actually going to be the worst clearing option. But... Or it's not going to be the worst clear option. A headhunter will feel the best to clear, but Bisco's Leash is definitely up there. And I hope this demonstration really shows you that you don't need to have like all these crazy belts. You don't need to have a headhunter to start doing this. You don't need to have a mage blood. Two inspired learning is actually incredibly strong, especially when you're farming stuff that takes advantage of how many rares can be on the map. So that is the demonstration for Bisco's. Now, next up, we have a demonstration with Headhunter. And Headhunter is going to feel by far the fastest in terms of how it's going to look like. So we're going to see exactly what it looks like. So basically, the pro biggest problem with Headhunter nowadays is it doesn't really make your character immune to damage anymore. You don't have the 90% max res. You don't have cap block and spell block. You don't have cap physical damage reduction. The biggest benefit is honestly going to be the energy shield you get when you steal that one mod. Now, Headhunter is unbeatable if you're doing Legion or Abyss as, or any League mechanics on an open layout map like Cemetery. And the biggest thing is, is your movement speed is really, really terrible on Headhunter. Especially when you're running... Uh, so this is the base movement speed of Mage Blood, And when you put on the Headhunter, it literally feels like your character is super, super slow. However, I am running... Uh, what's it called? Abyssco's... Or not Abyssco's... A Grease Embrace that you probably would not be running on Headhunter. So right now, I swapped out the two Inspired Learnings for Headhunter. And the biggest thing is, is that you can actually run insanely hard maps with Headhunter because the belt is really just that strong. So you can take a map like this or any maps like this, no regen, minus max. And these are maps that you would normally super struggle with. But with the Headhunter, you do not really have that much problems. So let me put on the compasses real fast. And this is a cemetery farm that I'm doing and showcasing right now. And I do think that this is probably one of the best demonstrations for what these maps will look like. So let's put in the map, put on ambush again, and 
you'll see immediately that this movement speed is really slow. And without Rampage, actually, this might even be a little bit slower at the start. But once you get a few buffs, and if you steal uh, Haste Aura, you're going to be Gucci at the start. So let's go do the same thing again. Run to the boss. And Harbinger is also another great source of rare buffs. So you can see right here, I'm already up to 15 buffs, right? And the biggest thing you'll notice is just keep in mind the number of buffs that I have. Now that's bad because I didn't get a player altar. Got a player altar over there. So make sure you always want to be looking for the player altars and keeping an eye out for the bot, the what's it called, the divine altar from the Eldritch minion. So here you can see it dies pretty fast enough. Make sure to check for the mage blood if it ever drops. So right now we're literally just going to be clearing the map again. And immediately you can see we're at 25 buffs. That's something you never really saw on Inspire Learning. And the mapping is very, very zippy, especially when you get what's it called? All the all the buffs up. So you make sure to clear the map as fast as possible. Look for the Eldritch Altars if they spawn. And try to loot on the side too, if it's possible at all. So now we have the legions, and the legions are where everything pops off. So look at this. Everything just immediately gets cleared in the Legion. Or not immediately, but dies fast enough, right? But keep in mind the Headhunter buffs that we will be having. It's at 24, which is actually kind of low. I'm actually not sure why it's so low. Maybe there's a lot of overlapping buffs, or maybe I'm just not killing the rares. But now we're up to 30. So speed is of the essence still whenever you use these uh, strategies. Because you want to have momentum. You want to try to open as many boxes as possible. And we died because we died to a minus max. But that's kind of a good showcase that Headhunter does not make you invincible. I had around 30 buffs and it's kind of a good little showcase right here because what happens when you die? Well, your character is really, really weak. So at this point, we are a complete pleb and we are fighting for our lives, right? We are trying to look for the next battery, the next big battery, and that's the Legion. So Legion is like your supercharger, if you want to think about it like that. And oh wait, there's an altar that we didn't click, so make sure to click the quantum rarity altar. And now we should be back in business, right? Do keep in mind that minus max is one of the most dangerous things that you could actually put on. And thing that's gonna get you killed even with all these head on buffs. So again, once you get the Legion, we're back up to 30 buffs. We're completely owning again for now, right? And then we go click on the other Legion, get ready to go charge it up and now we're at 36 so it's kind of a little bit of a fun little mini game you can have to yourself like what can i get the what can i get it all up to and here everything is popped again and then we can make sure to click all the boxes while you're looting maybe we can even get a brother's gifts for the first time ever now one thing I've, i wanted to mention was also that the brother's gift i don't know if it got nerfed or something but i actually got 11 brother stashes in a row yesterday while farming or in the past two days uh, it's kind of crazy because it's supposed to be a 50-50 and I did think that cemetery was going to be a pretty, uh, what's it called, even sort of farm or a less risky farm than Crimson Temple. But as, I, as you can see, we have 51 buffs and we have Soul Eater and the whole world is obliterated around us. But you can see we don't have any max res. We don't really have that much armor or evasion or physical damage reduction like in the past. So Headhunter definitely does not grant you that power. Now, after we, uh, what's it called? open all the boxes now's where the bad part really starts and this is the part that kind of makes head on kind of shitty which is the fact that your move speed is bad while looting and as soon as your uh, buffs fall off you will notice that you can barely move around the map and yeah this pretty much concludes the demonstration of the head on okay next up we have the mage blood for the mapping demonstration and the mage blood kind of is the best of both worlds so what you can do is you can put in two Inspire Learnings again. So we're going to put in these two Inspire Learnings over here and then over here. So we have these two Inspire Learnings and can we actually take out this? No, we cannot. So with these two Inspire Learnings, we're going to have a lot of the same power as the Headhunter, but we're not going to have the same duration again. Now the biggest thing about Mage Blood is it does solve a lot of your builds issues. You can fix all your flasks. Uh, you can fix all your resists your survivability, your movement speed by taking advantage of the flask suffixes. So what this means is that you can see right here, this flask actually gives us a bunch of rarity. So this flask alone is around 120% rarity. And then this flask alone is giving us so much resist to the fact that we're way over cap. And then for these flasks, if you want to see the difference in move speed, this is without the mage blood. 
and this is with the flask actually on and it's like a completely different character right so mage blood is the best of both worlds in the sense that it kind of mixes the flexibility and the movement speed of the character but it also kind of provides the what's it called it kind of provides the fun factor of headhunter with the two inspired learnings at the same time and this is the biggest difference right so when you're in the map and looting when you have a headhunter on and you have no more buffs you are literally crawling through the map like this and the best way you can do it is you can try to spam your movement skill and that is going to be the best solution if you have a head on it, right? But if you're doing a no regen map and you have no more mana, then you're kind of screwed over. However, if you have a mage blood, you can just zoom around, loot everything, and it's a lot better experience. Now, the question remains, how does this actually play in maps? So we're going to take a... This is a pretty hard map. Yeah, it's not too bad. We're going to take this and try out the mage blood. And you're going to see, in the end, it's a very, very similar play style again. You're, and it's not going to really seem that much different, except your character is going to feel a lot more zippy in the beginning. Now, the thing is, is that Rampage is really that strong, and that's why I really, really like Bisco's Leash. And I would even consider using a Bisco's Leash over a Mage Blood in a lot of scenarios, if because the clear, in all honesty, is not going to feel that much different once you get the Inspired Learning buffs, especially when you have the Legion. And I'm pretty sure you can tell from here that does the clear really look that much better than the Bisco, or is it around the same? So let's hope that we don't die to this. Oh no, this is this. I think we chose a really uh, difficult map, or something's going on. Alright, so you can see we don't have that like character power yet because we haven't gotten the buffs, but the character's move speed definitely feels really good. So make sure to take the alters again. Now I'm not gonna full clear this map just so you, you can see exactly. I just want to do a little bit of a demonstration to show you what Mage Blood actually looks like with two Inspires. And I do believe that this is still the best setup. You always want the Inspires as long as you're going to have Legion on the map. And you can see even without the Legions, we're at six buffs currently. And we're going to be getting up a little bit more. There's not really that many rares in maps compared to unless you put like League Mechanics on that actually has a lot of rares. And over there, that's one of the worst modifiers in the game which is the monsters are immune to damage for some reason. So we got all the altars, and now is where the fun begins. Or does it begin? So you can see right now that we're not having the best of time in terms of killing the monsters. I'm not really sure why. I mean, we just don't have enough Inspire Learning stacks, apparently. Or we're really missing that Rampage. So right now, we're kind of killing it all. We have 22. So our character is kind of uh, strong now. This is reduced effect of non curse auras. So finally, we have some power. And we died. So you can see again that you're going to have the same issue is that if once you lose the buffs and you do a really hard map, you're going to be kind of screwed. So let's try to open some strong boxes in order to get back some of our buffs again. So we have two. And we're, again, we're going to try to be looking for the Legion. It's kind of funny that both of the things died except the Bisco's Leash. Maybe the Rampage is kind of nice, right? So here we have the Legion. But in all honesty, I would honestly play the Bisco's Leash if you don't really notice that much of a difference. Just because the extra quant is going to be nice and so is the extra rarity. But that really just depends on your playstyle. But I do think that for looting, Mage Blood is definitely the best belt for looting. And you really need to be doing Legion or some sort of farm that has rares. Or otherwise, Mage Blood's just going to be the best belt in the end. So right here, you can see more or less the same thing. Everything is still going to die. But I do think that this map is very difficult. Or I don't know what is wrong with this. But something's wrong with my character. Uh, yeah, I mean, reduced effective auras is really bad for the build. But overall, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a demonstration about three different belts. Because I know a lot of people ask, oh, can you actually do it? And I just wanted to provide a very fair test in the sense that every one of the maps was pretty much the same and with the exact same farming style. Now, I do think that at the end of the day, all these belts come at a different price point. So it will most likely come down to your budget. And the most elegant solution in my eyes is to either use Headhunter or Biscos and swap to a Mage Blood for looting and then focus on movement speed for your skill tree. And I do think that this is going to be the best solution overall. And we also can emulate Rampage on Bisco's Leash with a weapon swap to a Rampage Crucible Bow or with a Sinvictas. And the way we can make it work with Sinvictas, even for a bow character, is that our Mirage Archer will actually kill some stuff while we're weapon swapped. 
And I do think that the biggest takeaway is your farming strategy should really dictate what belt you use along with your budget. Like if you're not doing Legion and you're not doing Abyss or you're not doing a mechanic like Harbinger that spawns a lot of rares, Headhunter and any Inspired Learning is going to have a lot less value and that's when Mage Blood is really going to shine through. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope this has been an eye-opening uh, demonstration and don't mind the depths too much. But I hope you find more mirrors, divines, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye. Stay